Buddha's Last Meal When the Buddha and his disciples arrived at Pava, near Kuzinagar, in course of their journey spreading the message of love and compassion, the son of the village blacksmith, whose name was Kunda, invited the party to a meal called Sukaramadava, or Boar's Delight. Some scholars believe it was a special delicious dish of mushrooms, while others believe it to be a dish of wild boar's flesh. The Buddha advised Kunda to serve him only with the Sukaramadava that he had prepared. The other food that Kunda had prepared could be served to the other monks. After the meals were served, Buddha told Kunda, Kunda, if any Sukaramadava is left over, bury it in a hole. I do not see anyone in the world other than the blessed one who could digest the food if he ate it. So be it, Lord, Kunda replied, and buried the leftovers in the ground. The Buddha also praised Kanda for the meal that had refreshed and strengthened him after his journey. Then the Blessed One spoke to the Venerable Ananda, saying, There are two offerings of food which are of equal fruition, of equal outcome, exceeding in grandeur the fruition and result of any other offerings of food. Which two? The one partaken of by the Tathagata before becoming fully enlightened and unsurpassed, supreme enlightenment, and the one partaken of by the Tathagata before passing into the state of Nibbana in which no element of clinging remains. By his deed the worthy Kanda has accumulated merit which makes for long life, beauty, well-being, glory, heavenly rebirth, and sovereignty. Thus, Ananda, the remorse of Kunda, the blacksmith for having provided the contaminated food, should be dispelled. Now it may happen that some people may make Kunda regret having given me the meal that made me sick. Ananda, if this should happen, you should tell Kunda that you have heard directly from the Buddha that it was a gain for him. Tell him that two offerings to the Buddha are of equal gain, the offering of food just before his supreme enlightenment and the offering of food just before he passes away. This is the final birth of the Buddha. Soon after this, the Buddha suffered from an attack of the dysentery he had been suffering from earlier and sharp pains came upon him. Though extremely weak, the Buddha decided to continue on immediately to Kuzinagar, a little more than six miles away. Then the Blessed One spoke to the Venerable Ananda, saying, Come, Ananda, let us go to Kuzinagar. After a painful struggle, he reached Malas's Sala Grove in the vicinity of Kuzinagar and asked Ananda to prepare a couch for him between the twin Sala trees with the head to the north. The Buddha took his last bath in the Kakutha River. Here Buddha ordained a new disciple named Pakusa who offered new robes both to the Buddha and Ananda. When Ananda helped the Buddha changing robe, he observed the skin of the Buddha becoming exceedingly clear and radiant. The Buddha told him that there were only two occasions when the Tathagata's body was in such state, Nibbana enlightenment and Parinibbana final passing away. The Buddha told Ananda that he would enter Parinibbana in the last watch of that night. When Ananda was weeping, the Buddha told him, Enough, Ananda! Do not grieve, do not lament. For, have I not taught from the very beginning that with all that is dear and beloved, there must be change, separation, and severance? Of that which is born, come into being, compounded, and subject to decay, how can one say, may it not come to dissolution? There can be no such state of things. Now you should put forth energy, and soon you too will be free from the taints. Therefore, Ananda, thus should you train yourselves, we shall abide by the Dhamma, live uprightly in the Dhamma, walk in the way of the Dhamma. The Buddha advised all beings present at the site, including many deities, that 
Impermanent are all compounded things. How could this his imminent death be otherwise? It was then that he made the famous admonition, Be a lamp unto yourself. When Ananda asked how should he treat the Buddha's body after death, the Buddha said, Do not hinder yourselves, Ananda, to honor the body of the Tathagata. Rather you should strive, Ananda, and be zealous on your own behalf, for your own good. Unflinchingly, ardently, and resolutely you should apply yourselves to your own good. The Buddha then asked Ananda to go into Kuzinagar and tell all the people that tonight, in the last watch of the night, the Buddha will pass away into Nirvana. Come and see the Buddha before he passes away. So Venerable Ananda, taking with him another monk, did as the Buddha bid him and went to Kuzinagar to tell the people. When they heard the news, they were much grieved. And all the people of Kuzinagar, men, women, and children came to the two big sala trees to bid a last farewell to the Buddha. Family by family, they bowed low down before him and so bade him farewell. The Buddha told Ananda and other bhikkhus that after his death, they should abide to his teaching as their teacher, Ananda, what I have taught and explained to you as Dhamma and discipline will be your teacher when I am gone. And the Buddha addressed the monks, saying, Behold now, Bhikkhus, I declare to you, all conditioned things are of a nature to decay. Strive on with earnestness. These were the last words of the Tathagata. The Buddha then entered the first jhana, the second jhana, the third jhana, the fourth jhana. Leaving the first jhana, he entered the second jhana, the third jhana, the fourth jhana. Leaving the fourth jhana, the blessed one immediately passed away. Was the Buddha poisoned? Yes, but not intentionally. The word poison implies conspiratorial, intentional act to kill a person as was done in case of Greek philosopher of Socrates in 399 BCE. He was made to drink hemlock. But in case of the Buddha, of course, he was poisoned, but not intentionally. It was an accidental food contamination. Even the Buddhists believed that he was poisoned, but not intentionally. In Mahaparinibbana Sutta, it is quite clearly mentioned that it was a case of accidental food contamination. Also, the fact that the Buddha asked Kunda to bury the leftover food, if any, in a hole because no one in the world except the Blessed One could digest the food if he ate it says a lot about the detrimental quality of the food and Kunda obediently buried the leftovers in the ground. According to Ben Anson, a Buddhist scholar from Perth, Western Australia, the word Sukara means pig, boar, and Madeva means delicate, well-liked, soft, and tender. So, the complete word Sukara Madava may mean the tender parts of a pig or boar enjoyed by pigs and boars, which may be referred to a mushroom or truffle, or yam or tuber. Some mushroom species are known to be poisonous. In some other commentaries, Sukara Madhava was also mentioned as a medicinal plant in classic Indian medicine, or as young bamboo shoots trampled by pigs. Moreover, according to the monastic rules, the monks are not allowed to eat meat from animals specifically killed to make food for them. The meaning of Sukara Madhava as pork slash boar meat is thus not appropriate here. Again, there is no Buddhist tradition which believes that the Lord was poisoned intentionally. In Mahaparinibbana Sutta, it is quite clearly mentioned that it was a case of accidental food contamination, which catalyzed the incidents of Buddha's death. The Sutta starts with an account of how the Lord was already quite sick a few days before his last meal. He had recovered from that illness as he was determined to give one clear last sermon to his Sangha. 
It was then that he made the famous admonition, Be a lamp unto yourself. After reiterating his teachings to the gathering, he had proceeded further on his last journey to Kashinagar, where he breathed his last. Posthumous Events According to the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, the Malians of Kashinagar spent the days following the Buddha's death honoring his body with flowers, music, and scents. The Sangha waited until the eminent elder Mahakasapa arrived to pay his respects before cremating the body. The Buddha's body was then cremated and the remains, including his bones, were kept as relics and they were distributed among various North Indian kingdoms like Magadha, Sakya, and Koliya. These relics were placed in monuments or mounds called stupas, a common funerary practice at the time. Centuries later they would be exhumed and enshrined by Ashoka into many new stupas around the Marayan realm. Kashinagar is one of the most important Buddhist pilgrimage sites in the world along with Lumbini, Bodh Gaya, and Sarnath. Thanks for your patience. I hope you like this video. Please support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Raj Rishi